I was really struck by a study that was done uh, recently of the data collected by, uh, through a series of polls of uh, public opinion that record growing Canadian negativity about Asia, and especially China. And yet responses in these data, when you looked at them, were very biased and remarkably ill-informed. And this wasn't just about China. This was about Korea, Japan, uh, countries that we think we know quite well. Well, this is not very reassuring as Canada finds its way in a world where there are major shifts in economic dynamism and political power that are underway. I say we're in a long, capital L, game, capital G, to a multipolar world order in which the U.S. is no longer in charge. And countries with large populations and dynamic economies have emerged, uh, particularly in Asia, but not exclusively. So what I want to discuss in the time I have are three implications for Canada uh, in the global economy. The first is the implications of these shifts for Canada in Asia, and then look at us in North America. And third, what I've most recently been uh, working on is the future of our relationship with China and realizing our potential as a Pacific, not North American, not Atlantic, but also a Pacific nation. So let's start with the shift towards the multipolar world, uh, which has created new tensions that could be quite disruptive unless the international community comes up with innovative multilateral approaches. In the increasingly dynamic geopolitical scene in the Asia-Pacific region, Canadians have largely been absent, and this is pointed out to me time and again uh, by uh, my con uh, um, contemporaries in uh, Southeast Asia, or were bystanders uh, while regional tensions have risen uh, between China and the United States. So the daily news informs us of flashpoints in the East and South China Seas. But these tensions are also being fed by the competition between the United States and China. Uh, think of the example most recent that it took uh, the U.S. Congress five years to agree that the International Monetary Fund governing structure be rejigged to give more clout uh, to China. And then think about China's uh, move in the last couple of years uh, to create an alternative international financing institution when it set up the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank, which, by the way, Canada has not yet uh, joined. 